today I squat 405 for the first time since my injury. Also, I'd like to thank you guys for the positive feedback on my last few videos. I've had a few people say they're the best I've ever done. Uh, the Dan Bell interview got you know, so much support. Um, and also, on the hamstring injury video itself, there was a clip where seven minutes in, uh, I edited the individual leaves just so that I could blur that as the camera artificially zooms in and out and then blur the curtains as well as myself and the protractor effect. Uh, so there are a lot of clips like that where that takes many, many hours. And you guys notice, and I appreciate that. And I think you guys always have in the past, but now it's correlated to the more successful videos more than ever. So that, anyways, without further ado, let's get right into the workout. All right, as you can see here, I have a unique setup for a slight incline bench press, just five degrees or less. And I'm gonna make a video on this maybe later. Maybe this will be the trendy 2021 Candido accessory of the year. We'll have to see though, because I don't make those videos until I run multiple training cycles with whatever accessory I'm talking about. And this is my first cycle with this. So the reason for it though is to basically find that point of transfer for a max grip with bencher because most just write off incline completely. And I think one of the main reasons is just the fact that you have to actually narrow your grip for a regular incline bench. Uh, and by having a very, very small incline, you're able to maintain that max grip width and then just have a slight shift in emphasis. And it feels like a high bar squat, but for the bench press. But I'll save that pitch for the actual video itself, if it comes. Here's the 405 squat. And I got it. Oh, my God. Nailed it. Killed it. Crushed it. But yeah, it moved well and it did not feel remotely uncomfortable. I uh, actually was able to jump from 315 straight to 405. And for the back off work, I'm still maintaining the same format of three sets of four, four second eccentric pause squat, not increasing the volume, just linear progression. And it's feeling great. Now, I will be transparent here and saying the deadlift is not feeling phenomenal. It's not feeling horrible, but I have not deadlifted 405. I actually did 385. For a set of eight and i do feel it somewhat in the hamstring on the deadlift so it's also noteworthy that in the study i mentioned in the last video uh, i never talked about the fact that the re-injury median date was 100 days after their first injury and remember it was 27 percent re-injured themselves so 100 days after it's pretty interesting so that's why coming back as quickly as possible is critical to maintain that motor control and right away get it back so I don't have to fight back for 405. But then I'm probably going to flatline things just a little bit. Work capacity is still catching up. But again, you see the benefit of pushing that loading immediately. Because remember, in my comeback with my back injury, I literally missed 455 for a single at some point. Whereas now I'm already at the point where I could squat 405 for 10 today if I had to. And I will probably hit a rep PR with 405 probably a month from now. I'll go for that. And then the singles will be around 500 low fives. So everything's feeling good. The goal for this channel in 2021 is to collab with the best lifters in the United States in person. I'm going to bring a force plate to measure the vertical leap. And I'm going to do two videos. One video is going to be an interview and it's going to maybe even have a multi-cam setup if I can. I'll grow my skills as I go along, hopefully. And then the second video will be us training together just casually. And it will be, you know, 4K quality, you know, beautiful footage that you don't get out of a, high, a lot of high level lifters since they are low key guys. So far already, Ashton Ruska has agreed and he has the best coefficient in the world drug tested. Dan Bell has agreed who, you know, we had on that video. And then also Jesus, who's the junior super heavyweight record holder and is on the come up. And he might be start being competitive really with, uh, with Ray Williams and getting close to uh, pushing him. So also of course, Ray Williams, I'll contact and I'll see if I, I can drive over there. I know what we have here is special. And I know when I make videos like the one with Dan Bell or, or Ray highlighting other people, it's, it's the reason I'm on this earth, honestly. Like it, it feels like that, where the way you guys respond, the way I, I love editing, I love creative, uh, the whole creative process, uh, voiceovers, things like that, present, being a salesman really for the sport and for these lifters who are just great people. Um, and the way they're so grateful in private, it's, 
It's just what I'm here to do. So just know that the more you share this channel, the more ideas I'm gonna get out because I have nonstop ideas. No, I can promise you that, nonstop ideas. Uh, so make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you. Peace. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who comes short again and again. It's gonna be like the opposite of some channels where you know the bigger they get in bodybuilding, then they kind of switch to business and vlogging. The bigger I get in this, the more powerlifting you're gonna get, the more it's gonna expand. And long-term, one of my goals is to make a short film on powerlifting. I will at some point in my life. I have absolutely no doubt on that. And try to get, not try to get, I will get on Amazon Prime if that still exists.